this point, I want to talk about a topic that is related to atomic mass and atomic number, the, the types of things that we've been talking about in the previous section. So uh, as a refresher, I want you to remember that the atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. Now, that being said, I'm going to ask a series of questions. Again, you can pause if you'd like to try and answer those questions, and then I will uh, continue on and uh, discuss the answers in, in the audio. So the first question is, what type of atom is this? And remembering again, I'm not drawing the electrons. The red circles are supposed to be protons. The gray circles, if, if there were any in this case, would be neutrons. So the question is, what type of atom is this? You can pause and um, look at the periodic table if you want. And th the way to answer this question is to say, look, this, this atom has one proton. Look on your periodic table. Um, what atom, what type of atom has one proton? And you'll see that the atom with an atomic number of one is hydrogen. So this is a cartoon version of a hydrogen atom. So um, if you understand that, we can go on to the next question. Next question is the same. What kind of atom is this? But it's a slightly different atom. It has one proton and one neutron. And again, you can refer to your periodic table and try to answer this question again and pause here if you'd like. Um, and the answer to this question is it's also a hydrogen atom because what makes a hydrogen atom, or what makes any type of atom, is the number of protons that it has. And in this case, this atom also has one proton. It happens to have one neutron as well, but this is still a hydrogen atom, and this is also a hydrogen atom. The difference is that this hydrogen atom here has a mass that is twice as much, because it has two, it has one proton and one neutron, the mass is twice as much as the atom on the left here. So even though they're both hydrogens, this one has a mass, or you can think of it as weighing twice as much. Third question is the same question again, but with a different atom. Um, in this case, what type of atom is this? Again, you can pause and try to answer that question. And the answer is the same again. This is also a hydrogen atom because it has one proton. In this case, it has two neutrons, so this atom over here on the right has a mass that's three times as much as the mass of this atom over here. Or if you want to think of it informally, this atom over here weighs three times as much as the atom on the left. So this hydrogen atom has a mass of one Dalton. This one has a mass of two Daltons, and this one has a mass of three Daltons. Because of that, you can think of the one in the middle, if you wanted to informally, you could call it heavy hydrogen. And this atom over here, you could call it heavier hydrogen. Now, there is a more formal term that's used to describe elements that uh, atoms that are of the same element but have different masses, and that term is, an, is called isotope. So this atom, this atom, and this atom are all isotopes of hydrogen. And isotope uh, is basically, what isotope means is an isotope is a version of an element that is either heavier or lighter than other versions of the same element. So these are all versions of hydrogen. Some of them are lighter than the others, some are heavier than the others, and some are somewhere in the middle. So they are all isotopes of hydrogen. They're different versions of hydrogen that are heavier or lighter than other versions. Now, at this point, I, I want to point out that it's not just hydrogen that can have isotopes. Pretty much all naturally occurring elements have isotopes that, that we are aware of. And as an example, I want to talk about this atom over here. Um, I can ask you what type of element it is, and if you want to pause, you can try to answer that question. This particular element has uh, six protons, so if you look up uh, which element has six protons in the periodic table, you'll see that it's carbon. I could ask you what the atomic number of this atom is, and the answer to that is the same. Six atomic number is the number of protons, so the atomic number of this particular atom is six, and then I could ask you what is the atomic mass of this element, or what is its mass number, and again you can pause if you'd like. The answer is to simply count up all of the protons and neutrons, and the atomic mass of this atom is 12 atomic mass units, or 12 Daltons. So this is a carbon atom that has a mass of 12 atomic mass units. This over here is also a carbon atom. It has six protons, which makes it a carbon atom, but it's a little bit different. 
it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight neutrons instead of six neutrons over here. So th the only thing that's different between this carbon atom on the right and this carbon atom on the left is this one has a slightly greater mass. Its atomic mass is 14 atomic mass units because you add up six protons and eight neutrons. And so these are two different isotopes of carbon atoms. This one has a mass of this is a carbon that has a mass of 14 atomic mass units. This is a carbon atom that has a mass of 12 atomic mass units. Now, there will be times when you, if you were a chemist, you might want to talk about only one version of a carbon atom. And maybe you were only interested in talking about the, ver the version of carbon that has a mass of 14 Daltons. And you didn't care about any other version of carbon not this one on the left, not any others that we might not have even discussed. If you were only interested in talking about this one and you wanted to describe it to other people, the way that you would do it, uh, one way that you would do it, is you would call it carbon-14. And the number at the end of the name is basically telling you that you're talking about carbons, only carbons that have a mass of 14. And as you might guess, this atom over here, if you were only interested in talking about that one, you would call it carbon-12. If you wanted to only talk about this um, in a more formal chemistry setting, only this isotope of carbon, a simpler way of doing it, instead of writing out carbon-14, is what you typically do is you write the symbol of the element, so in this case it would be carbon, and then you write the mass of the particular isotope that you're talking about as a superscript to the left side of the symbol. So in this case, if we are only talking about uh, this isotope of carbon, the carbon that weighs four, that has a mass of 14 atomic mass units, we would write the letter, capital letter C and a superscript of 14 to the left of that symbol. This is basically saying we're only talking about this isotope. We don't care about any other isotope of carbon in this case. And so that's the mass number there. And if we were only interested in talking about this isotope of carbon and we didn't care about any of the others, we would write the capital letter C and we would write a 12 as a superscript to the left, which basically means we're only talking about carbons that have a mass of 12 atomic mass units. So as an exercise to see how well you're understanding this material, um, we're going to play a little game, which basically means we're going to just ask a few questions. You can pause to try to figure out the answers to see how well you're understanding the material. So here we go. How many protons does oxygen-17 have? And that's how this would be pronounced. So again, you're probably going to need to consult your periodic table. Um, so get a periodic table handy. You can pause and try to work on this. Basically, the answer to this question is how many protons does oxygen-17 have? You have pro the number of protons is the atomic number. So you would simply look at the periodic table look up the atomic number of oxygen, and you will see that every oxygen atom has eight protons. So this number, in this case, doesn't even matter, because I'm asking the number of protons, and every oxygen atom in the universe has eight protons. It doesn't matter what the mass is. Every single one has eight protons, so that's the answer. The next question, how many neutrons does oxygen-17 have? And again, you can pause to try to answer this question on your own. The answer is basically, uh, now you need to use this piece of information. We know from the previous question that every oxygen has eight protons. So of this mass of 17 atomic mass units, eight of those atomic mass units come from the protons. So the rest of them have to come from the neutrons. So the number of neutrons that oxygen 17 has is 17 minus eight because that's the number of protons. So 17 minus 8 is 9, and that's our answer. How many neutrons does oxygen 17 have? It has 9 neutrons, because we know it has a mass of 17. We know that 8 of that mass comes from protons, so the rest have to come from the neutrons. At this point, I want to uh, finish up the discussion of atomic mass by talking about something called average atomic mass. So. In the previous section, uh, in the previous slides, we were basically talking about how hydrogen and other atoms can have different isotopes. So you can have hydrogen atoms that have a mass of one Dalton, 
You can have hydrogen atoms that have a mass of two Daltons. You can even have them that have a mass of three Daltons. But let's just pretend, for the sake of argument, this isn't really true, but let's just pretend that in our universe, uh, hydrogens come in one of two flavors. They either come like this, with a mass of one Dalton, or they come like this, with a mass of two Daltons. And it's about 50-50 for each one in our pretend universe. In other words, if you got uh, a bunch of hydrogen atoms together, about half of them would have a mass of one Dalton, and about half of them would have a mass of two Daltons. The question is, if half of them have a mass of two Daltons and half have a mass of one Dalton, what's the average mass of a hydrogen atom in our pretend universe? Now, I'll pause here, and you can think about that, and we'll discuss that in a second. The answer is that in our pretend universe, if half of the hydrogens are like this on the left and half are like this on the right, the average atomic mass of hydrogen atoms is about one and a half. It's, it's halfway in between these two. And we can do this uh, just by calculating the average. Let's pretend that we have four hydrogen atoms, the two on the left, each way one Dalton plus one Dalton, and the two on the right, each way two Daltons. So there are two sets of two Daltons. So one plus one plus two plus two divided by all of the atoms that we have in our picture gives us the, gives us the average, and the average is one and a half Daltons. So in our pretend universe, we could say that hydrogen atoms have an average atomic mass of one and a half Daltons. Sometimes they come in this form, uh, roughly 50% of the time, and roughly 50% of the time they come in this form. Um, th this is actually a, a fairly crucial piece of information or a fairly crucial concept that you will see uh, in more detailed versions of the periodic table. And I'm going to show you a more detailed version of the periodic table in a few minutes. The thing I want to emphasize here is this was a pretend exercise. Uh, it, it's not true that half of the hydrogen atoms in the universe uh, have a mass of two Daltons and the other half have a mass of one. It's, it's almost all of the hydrogen atoms in our universe have a mass of one Dalton. And every once in a while you'll see one with a mass of two Daltons, and every once in a while you'll see one with a mass of three. Because of that, if you look at more detailed versions of the periodic table, and here we're focusing on the upper left side of the periodic table looking at hydrogen, the average atomic mass of hydrogen is often written um, uh, in part of this box. And here is the average atomic mass of hydrogen. The, the average atomic mass is 1.0079. If every single hydrogen atom in the universe had a mass of one Dalton, like I'm showing you here, if all of them were like that, and there were none like this on the right, and there were none that had a mass of three Daltons, then the average atomic mass would be exactly equal to one. But if you look at it here, it, uh, you can see that it's slightly bigger than one. It's 1. 1.0079. What this is basically telling you is that most of the hydrogen atoms in the universe uh, have a mass of one, but there are some that bring the average up a little bit over one. So there are some hydrogen atoms that have mass of two or three Daltons. And this is true for pretty much every naturally occurring element. If you look at beryllium, beryllium's average atomic mass is 9.0122. What this means is that most beryllium atoms that you could look at probably have a mass of 9, but there are some that are a little bit heavier uh, or have greater mass than 9, and they bring up the average atomic mass of beryllium to slightly more than 9. Or if you look at scandium over here, it has a mass of 44.956, which probably means that most scandium atoms have a mass of 45 atomic mass units, but there are enough uh, isotopes of scandium that have a mass that's slightly less than 45 that it brings the average atomic mass of scandium down uh, slightly below uh, 45. And you, and you can see this for, for many of the other naturally occurring elements. So th this is another piece of information to get from the periodic table. First thing that you can get is the abbreviation or the symbol. That's the most obvious one. The whole numbers that you see are the atomic, uh, the atomic numbers or the number of protons in the atom. Sometimes they'll write the name of the atom, and very often they will also show you the average atomic mass of each particular element. So 
In summarizing this section, what I would like you to know is I want you to know what atomic mass means. That is basically the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in an atom. Know what atomic number means. That essentially means how many protons a particular atom has. Know the electrical charge associated with protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons have a charge of plus one. Neutrons have no electrical charge. Electrons have a charge of minus one. And then know the relative weights of protons, electrons, and neutrons. And again, I put weights in uh, quotes there because really what I'm talking about is mass. Know uh, that protons and neutrons have roughly similar mass, and you can think of one proton as having a mass of one atomic mass unit, and a neutron as having a mass of one atomic mass unit. And you can think of the electrons as uh, having so little mass that they don't really count in our calculations. And that is the end of the section on protons and neutrons. The next thing that we're going to talk about to finish up this unit is electrons.